Hello, Macy here. This is a shipyard video featuring the new Hunter class carrier. In this series I won't be talking much about Spirit Wolf, just ships and building ships and flying ships. I would also use these videos to give you the various craft files. Don't worry, more Spirit Wolf episodes are on the way. And here it is in orbit, after a gruelling ascent, but we'll get to that later. This is the whole ship in the space plane hangar, or should I say spaceship hangar, including the launch stage here that will take it almost all the way up to orbit before we fire up her six atomic engines. I was looking at a battle star um, just prior to building this. I thought putting hangers on the side spontons was a great idea. I think some of you noticed my influence. So these were originally designed to house light fighters. For the bridge, I used a copula thingy. I like it. It's a bit Emperor's Throne Room. Well, it's not actually, is it? I'm just insane. Um, but it looks good, being fairly practical. OK, it's not that fairly practical. Um, let's move on. I'm just showing you the interior of the ship here and all these gangways and compartments were supposed to be um, traversable, but I had to ditch that along with many other things. This is engineering, where the chief lives, and this is the power core here that drives the ship. OK, it doesn't drive the ship. It's just where I keep the RCS propellant and the um, power generators. The 16 Hanto Seeker missiles it's carrying are basically probes with batteries that can lock onto targets, powered by a single engine and a little fuel tank. They're more or less spaceships in their own right. They have extreme range. I believe Hanto means hunter in Japanese, um, which is rather appropriate, I thought. Underneath here is the comms tower and a surface scanner, clearly the most important bit of the ship. Look, I fully acknowledge I'm being very bad at showing you around this ship. But really, you can just download the craft file, which I'll give you in the description. And you can just pull it apart and retro-engineer it if you're really interested in um, how I put this together. I'm just sort of briefly running over it. The main object of this video is to just show you how to launch it, if any of you are actually that insane. And if you look at this comparison against the Spirit of Kerbin, you can just get an idea of how massive this thing is, and therefore incredibly difficult to actually get into space. I'm not sure if you can see down there, but this thing also weighs 1,382 tonnes. So you can see why I've had to use wing parts again, rather than armour. I mean, because if this was made from hull plating, it would never actually um, lift off the ground. But because I've used wing parts, it becomes very difficult to actually fly this thing at speeds without toppling over. So you have to go up very slowly, the whole way. And that, of course, is extremely inefficient on the fuel. All this is, of course, due to the new atmospheric model, which I do like, but it did break everything. At first, of course, I'm going to burn all the engines I have at full throttle just to get off the ground, and we're not really going anywhere in a hurry. I mean, it's very um, heavy to just even get off the ground, but we do pick up speed slowly. You might recognize these scenes from Spirit Wolf, because of course I've used these scenes in Spirit Wolf. This is the same launch, um, completely unabridged, although I fear not. I have um, fast-forwarded a lot of it. But you'll notice a few of these cinematic pauses amidst my struggle, um, which are the bits you'll recognise. I'm going to accelerate flat out until we get to 60 metres per second, and then maintain no faster than that until we get through the lower layers. I'm watching this tank here, because it's going to be the first thing we drop after those boosters. Of course, just drop the boosters when they run out. All the stages are linked to spacebar, so you can just drop them progressively. I've set the SAS to radial because it does seem to keep that heading a little bit better. But I don't know if you can see here, I'm struggling, really struggling to keep this on bearing. So it takes a lot of manual manipulation the whole way up. Just so you know, there is nothing between us. I will show you what happened in an alternate universe where Macy makes a hideous mistake, causing the death of a carrier's crew. Let this be a demonstration as why you have to go up slowly in this universe. As the shock and horror unfolds before us, we collectively put our hands over our eyes and return to this universe where we play that bit again. Macy, you used a save. Oh, come on, please. No. I know, I know. Shame face. If you look back, you'll see I actually saved um, just before I dropped those tanks there. And that is a dodgy bit because you're shifting your weight a little bit there, which sort of throws you off. I recommend you do the same, but if you're really hardcore, 
then don't but i'm clearly not hardcore um i did nearly pull all my hair out trying to get this into orbit so uh hang on wait i'm waffling on and the um, video is getting ahead uh let me just pause this so we were holding 60 meters per second through the whole first bit but i'm allowing it to creep up to about 80 meters per second nearing the top of that first blue band when all the outboard engines have been jettisoned Increase to max throttle, you'll need to actually at that point, otherwise you'll start decelerating. Then you can let your speed creep up to about 160 meters per second and then you can cruise, just let the engine tick over until you get to at least 25,000 meters. So around now the atmosphere is just thin enough that we can risk turning this. Now if you think you can start your gravity turn earlier, be my guest, but I find that 25,000 meters is pretty much the minimum if you ever want to recover from your turn. As you can see I'm taking it real slow just trying to force that heading there onto about 45 degrees and then I'll just switch it to prograde and burn. I'm now just going to gravity turn by keeping that prograde heading on until we can push out our orbit here to at least 90 to 100 kilometers. Now you have to be careful here because you could just burn all the fuel um, but it won't quite reach orbit if you do it that way. You have to at some point switch to the atomic engines. So it's more a matter of judgment when you think you've got high enough to be able to make up that last bit of speed in time. So I think that transition should be around now and we are ready for separation. And I think you know what happens next. In a random act of stupidity, I managed to point two decouplers facing each other across this deck, which have then broken stuff. So you may want to go and fix that before launching it. You may also find that I've attached spotlights to the decouplers instead of the ship. So all that stuff we've just attached there was just only to get us through the atmosphere. We don't need any of that anymore. All the paddles to help us up and the scaffolding to keep us rigid. Um, now we're just on her own engines. I'm warping up to the top of this orbit so we can get the most out of this burn. Um, I think we've got enough time. Burning bang on apoapsis is obviously much more efficient, but we need to make sure we've got time to do that. You may have noticed all the tanks in this are mixed fuel, so when you refuel this you'll need to refuel it with liquid only if you plan on going anywhere. It would be more efficient if it had dedicated liquid tanks, but carrying redundant fuel and fuel tanks through that launch would make it even harder. Also, she needs to keep a fleet of ships in action, all of which are very hungry on oxidizer. If it can be refueled in situ at the combat zone, it's best to have a 50-50 split anyway, so the fleet can actually refuel. So you can see my dilemma. In true Vanguard style, whether this now has enough Delta V to get to duel is questionable at best. She also hasn't got heat shields, so air braking will have to be carefully measured, if at all. I do have a plan, however. So we've done it, at last. A nice 100 kilometer orbit. And I hope you got here too, and if you did, I'd like to congratulate you. This is not a tutorial on the best way to do this, just a visual explanation as to how I did it. I'm sure there are many different ways to do it. For example, you could see I did the last bit through Atmo at 200, but I was saying do 160. And that's because when I did it at 160, I found it much easier to turn. But it's all very experimental. You could also try going faster or turning earlier, or even better, redesign the whole thing. In fact, please redesign the whole thing. And this is the crew, chilling out in the lounge, in the bridge, waiting for their Spirit Wolf episode to begin. So, after a cheeky save, we're now going to test the missiles. I can't really test these on the ground, I have to be in space. So I've just released one of her 16 Hanto Seeker missiles, just to give it a test. Now like I've said, these are guided, so I can now take control of it. It's got the smallest engine, so we can control it properly, along with an SAS module powered by a battery, which also powers the probe brain. Now I'm hoping these missiles can defend against fighter attacks, but they could be quite versatile in other roles, and I've been thinking about this. Offensively, you could have them support fighters at extreme range while keeping the carrier out of combat or even have them travel with the fighter formation to maximise that strike potential 
kind of like combat drones. Uh, yes, I am currently aiming this at the carrier, but don't worry, it won't do any damage, I don't think. And uh, remember, I'll save, so this doesn't matter, it's an alternate universe. Just look away, don't watch. I'm not going to intentionally blow anything up, you'll have to wait for future Spirit Wolf episodes to see that. I'm just testing if these Hantos can actually do what it says they can do on the tin. I wouldn't want to find out that they can't halfway to duel. These are much like the standard torps the Mosquito crew carried, and uh, therefore you have to build up quite a bit of speed to get the potential out of them. So here we go, here we go, and blam! See, I told you, it's fine. It's fine. You see, she's tougher than that. You had faith, I'm sure. But not to be underestimated, we once blew a cruiser up with a single standard torp. However, it doesn't need to fire its hantos as seekers. It can actually just fire a swarm, an area of denial, or even individually, much like a fighter would. So it's a bit of a maximize forward firepower, don't let one of them through type scenario. But it's not very conservative on ammunition, it is for um, emergencies and fun. Well, it's there if we need it. I will include all the control group um, shortcuts in the craft file download, a little instruction manual. So even though we fired these as torps rather than seekers, there's nothing to stop us just taking control of one, or all of them, at any point. I mean, you could fire a whole swarm, fire and forget, although later you could go in and individually assign targets for each one. I mean, it could be quite awesome in the right scenario, but it's not very conservative on ammo, as I just said, so anyway. I won't hit Laniakea this time. I'll go for that docking port floating over there, but it's it's very small. You can see I'm just practicing with these, because they're a bit jumpy. They're too sensitive, really. They do work. They're certainly more accurate than a normal torpedo, but they do require a little bit of micromanagement and some very sensitive aiming. So... Hitting really small targets might be a little bit tricky, but it should be okay. Especially when I get a little bit of practice. So you do know I'm going to miss this, right? I'm already making excuses. But it's not too bad. If it was more than a metre across, I might have hit it. I do love this ship. I can assure you, any ill will you may have detected in my voice is on account of launching it and the sacrifices I made to achieve that. Now it's up, I have a good feeling about her, and I know Lani Akea is going to serve Spirit Wolf well. Incidentally, Lani Akea is also the name of this small patch of universe we all live in. I'm not talking about our galaxy or even our local supercluster of galaxies. I'm talking about the supercluster our local supercluster belongs to, which is more than 500 million light years across. I believe in Hawaiian, it means immeasurable or infinite heavens which again I think is rather appropriate. Bye for now.